sedition and different things going on with our government. Father, I, I pray that you would grant us one more great awakening, yeah. uh, one more time of revival for your for your church. Uh, Father, help us to realize that it's not about the donkey, it's not about the elephant, it's about the lamb. Uh, yeah. And Lord, help us to keep our focus on him. And uh, Lord, help us not to, to give in to the uh, folks that try to provoke us one way or the other. Yeah. But Lord, help us to keep calm, keep our focus on you. And, and when it does come to voting in November, we vote for those who come the closest to believing what we believe. Yeah. Let us not vote for somebody because they're male or female, because they're white, because they're black. Lord, help us to vote for those that, are, that come most closely to living out and believing in the Christian ideals that we have. Yeah. Father, be with us as we open up our hearts, souls, and minds. Uh, to the message tonight, to the study tonight, as we continue on in the book of Jude. Watch over us, fill us with your spirit, and teach us tonight, Lord. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And as you come on tonight, let us know who you are. I see we've got at least one here already. Good to have you, whoever you are. We're in the book of Jude. The book of Jude is one chapter. Uh, when I left, well, the last time I was here, a couple weeks ago, we, we had gone over the first several verses and spoke about the fact that Jude had stated at the beginning of his letter, hey, Belinda, Belinda's with us. Uh, Jude stated at the beginning of his letter that there was something he wanted, to the right, he wanted to write to the church about, but there was a more pressing issue as he, for lack of a better term, went to put pen to paper. And it had to do with uh, what we've been talking about in Hebrews, what I've been talking about in Colossians on Sunday mornings. It's contending for the faith because of the false teachers that were that were rising up. Uh, so the Holy Spirit impressed upon him to, to write about the false teachers and uh, that were that were infiltrating the church and leading people astray. And he talked and we talked about the fact that they that, that they were sneaking in. You know that they weren't coming through the front door. They were they were kind of sneaking in and. Uh, he wrote about, he gave some examples of, of, of false teaching and God punishing it, uh, punishing the false teachers about the Israelites. Some of the Israelites were punished by not being allowed to enter into the, uh, into the land of Canaan, mm -hmm. you know, because they, that because of their disobedience, talked about angels leaving their domain and coming to earth and they were judged for that and the judgments of Sodom and Gomorrah because of their disobedience. And tonight we're going to take a, a little bit, uh, uh, take a look some more at, at some of these, at, at some of these false teachers. And I'm going to be going over verses 8 through 11 tonight. So I'll just, four verses, I'll just go on ahead and, and read those. Uh, Jude writes, likewise, also these dreamers defile the flesh, reject authority, and speak evil of dignitaries. Yet Michael, the archangel, in contending with the devil, when he disputed about the body of Moses, dared not bring against him or a many Satan or a violating accusation, but said, the Lord rebuke you. But these speak evil of whatever they do not know, whatever they know, uh, and whatever they know naturally, like brute beasts in these things they corrupt themselves. Woe to them, for they have gone in the way of Cain, have run greedily in the era of Balaam for profit, and perished in the rebellion of Korah. I'm going to read the Bible, 12 and 13 also. These are spots in your love feast, while they feast with you without fear, serving only themselves. They are clouds without water, carried about by winds, laid out on trees without fruit, twice dead, pulled up by the roots, raging waves of the sea, foaming up their own shame, wandering stars from who has reserved the blackness of darkness forever. Wow, that's a lot there in those uh, first few things. Okay, it's good to see Miss Sue with us and Miss Brenda. Ms. Brenda, if you don't mind, send us a comment about how Brother Stewart's doing. Uh, but we'll get into this beginning at verse, ver verses 8 and 9. He says, Likewise, these dreamers defile the flesh, reject authority, and speak evil of dignitaries. And he's speaking dreamers here. These, the, these folks, these Gnostics, these false teachers claim to have visions. And you'll hear every once in a while about people saying, well, I had a, I had a vision from God. I had a revelation from God. I'm very leery when somebody tells me that. Especially leery if somebody tells me they've had a vision or a revelation from God 
that doesn't match up with what God's word says. And you hear people all the time, especially these name it, claim it guys on TV, talking about having revelations from God. Uh, you know, I've, I've heard several of them. Uh, uh, was it Benny Hinn? Benny Hinn or one of those types one time talked about having a revelation from God that even the Apostle Paul didn't get because the Apostle Paul just couldn't understand it. And I'm thinking here, probably the, the, the greatest Christian in the world, if you will, the Apostle Paul, and, and God showed something, showed this God who's something that, that, that even the Apostle Paul couldn't handle. You know, I know, uh, who's the, uh, Joyce Myers. Somebody asked her about something one time that, that was in contradiction to God's word, and, and her comeback was, well, you know, God and I have got an understanding. Well, yeah, you know, yeah, you and God got an understanding of what you're what you're saying is sin. You know, uh, Taylor and Sarah, with you, hey guys, good to see you. So the, the he's, Jews talk about these dreamers, and, and again, remember that if our dreams don't line up with Scripture, our so-called visions don't line up with Scripture, then it didn't come from God. And I think I referred to this a few weeks ago. Paul, in one of his letters, said that if an angel or even myself speak another gospel to flee from it. Don't believe it, you know. Mm -hmm. But what was going on here are these false teachers, their thought lives were perverted. They, they were delusional. What they thought and taught was not based in reality, you know. And, and again, that's what happens today. But the thing of it is, uh, uh, okay, amen. Thanks, Miss Brenda. Uh, she said, Brother Stewart's still having some chest pains. Uh, uh, but these were conscious decisions. You don't have to turn there, but you, you can write it down. But if you want to, going back to Romans uh, chapter 1, and I think I've shared this already in this study, but I'm going to share it again, or maybe I, I shared it with our, with our last study. Romans chapter 1, verses 20 through uh, 25. Uh, Paul wrote, For since the creation of the world... His, meaning God's invisible attributes are clearly seen, being, excuse me, understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so they are without excuse. This is important, verse 21, because although they knew God, in other words, God had revealed himself to them, although they knew God, they did not glorify him as God, nor were thankful but became futile in their thoughts, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Professing to be wise, they became fools. This is what these false teachers were doing then, and what they're doing now. They claim to be wise. Well, God, I've got such a special relationship with God. This is what he shared with me. But professing to be wise, they became fools and changed the incorruptible God into an image like made like corruptible man, and birds and four-footed animals and creeping things. Therefore, God gave them up to their uncleanness and the lust of their hearts to dishonor their bodies among themselves who exchanged the truth of God for the lie, the lie, and worship and serve the creature rather than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. Now, when it speaks here of serving the creature, they're not talking about necessarily serving a, 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 a bull or a calf, or something like that. When they say serving the creature, they're talking about they're serving themselves. You know, this is this, this is what God's told. God told me this is okay for me to do this. You know, God told me as long as I love the person that I'm with, it, 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 it doesn't matter. You know, they're exchanging the truth of God for a lie. They exchanged his glory and, and, and made it incorruptible. Yes, some of them were worshiping birds and four-footed animals and creeping things, but it got worse than that. It got more perverted than that. And we see that going on uh, even today. Hey, Tyler, good to, have, good to have you with us, buddy. Uh, does anybody anybody have anything in your commentaries to maybe add to that? Okay. He, he goes on to say that, uh, uh, where am I? Uh, they defile the flesh, and I don't need to get into what that means. 
we all know it with, 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 with that speaking of there. You know, because much of their religious ritual back in that day centered around illicit sexual practices. Remember, the Gnostics were the ones that were saying your body and your spirit, your physical part and your spirit part were, were, were not connected. And so there were two things you could do. Number one, you can defile your body and it doesn't mess up your spirit. But if you do defile your body and you want to try to tie the two of them together, well, God's a forgiving God. He forgives everything. So look at what kind of grace you're showing to people. You, you can be as evil, mean, and nasty and as sinful as you want to, and God's going to forgive what you're doing. It's, it's called cheap grace. It's taking advantage of God's grace. It's called heresy when you, when you get right down to it, you know. Uh, and, and I've spoken recently about how God abhors a vacuum. And when these dreamers, when these, when these uh, false teachers turn away from God's truth, something has got to replace it, which we just saw in, when I referenced that passage from Romans. You know, God, the, uh, nature does not like a void. There's got to be something to, to fill it. He says they defile the flesh. Uh, Uh, they reject authority. Again, they were they were talking about people like Peter and Paul and, and, and even Jude and James. You know, either either they were they were saying that they, they that they were flat out uh, not telling the truth, or if they were the Judaizers, they would say, Oh well, yeah, what they're saying is true, but you got to remember, you know, what they're saying is true. Jesus is the Messiah, but remember, Jesus was a Jew. And so, therefore, you need to not just put your faith in Jesus, but in all the rituals and all the law that that uh, that our forefathers, our religious forefathers before us, were saying you had to do. You can't eat this. You got to eat that. Half of them were added by their own exactly. Yeah. Their own desires, because yeah. the Ten Commandments were sufficient. Exactly. <laughs> and I and I think and somebody correct me if I'm wrong. I I, I think in. And I read somewhere that the, the, that the religious leaders came up with over 400 mm -hmm. laws that they thought were helping folks understand the Ten Commandments yeah, better. Like, well, like, you know, the like, best thing they could be teaching the folks about the Ten Commandments is we can't keep them. <laughs> right. But, you know, they were saying they're trying to add definitions like to the Sabbath day. What, what constituted work? Exactly. Can you carry yeah. a egg? Can you start a fire? Yeah, yeah, yep, yep, yep. You can, you can, I mean, based on what Jesus was teaching, you can get your goat out of a pit, but you can't heal a lame man. Right. You know, uh, and I think I told you guys when Tammy and I were in Israel on the Sabbath day, the hotel we stayed in, they had a kosher, they had a kosher hotel, I mean, a kosher elevator where all the buttons were pushed, they were programmed, so it stopped at every level because pushing a button on an elevator was work. They didn't have a problem having non-Jews working in the hotel and cooking their meals and serving them, but they wouldn't do it. Yeah, and that, that again, that's an example of the law that exists even even to today. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there are a lot of uh, a lot of, of practicing Jews that they will leave their homes over the weekend. And go stay at a hotel or somewhere like that. So every so they won't be guilty of breaking the law and have everybody waiting on them and serving them. You know. and, but that's what was going on there. You know. But these guys were taking making it even worse. They were defiling the flesh with their uh, sexual rituals. Uh, they reject authority and again speak evil of of the dignitaries. Yet uh, Peter and Paul didn't have it all right. They they were they were right to a degree. You know, but then there were some of them that were even speaking evil. Well, Paul Paul talked about that in in his letter to the uh, to the Corinthians. You know, he says some were preaching the gospel in a sense to spite him and to make him look bad. Some were completely rejecting him, saying that he was a false teacher. Uh, these guys spoke spoke and taught not just evil, but they spoke and they taught blasphemy. You know, not just taking God's name in vain, but denying God and challenging Him. You know, 
And, and what I mean by, by denying God, they were, reject, they were rejecting Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. That's rejecting God. Had a, uh, a nurse that was at the hospital, Brother Stewart was witnessing to her the other day. And, uh, I think she was, uh, I think she was Hindu because he went to give her a, a New Testament. And she, really good. She said, oh, thank you so much. I'm going to go home and read this. And, 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 and Stuart said, well, I want you to come back if I'm still here because I want to talk to you about, about Jesus Christ, some more about Jesus because they were getting ready to take him down. I want to talk to you some more about Jesus Christ and, and him being the way to God. Oh, I worship all of them. And he's like, oh, she said, I, I worship all of them. You know, they all they all lead us to God and Stuart where I can say that same as no, no, they don't. You know, but I want to have the opportunity to come back and and, and talk to you. I don't know whether or not he, he, he got to see her or not. Uh, but uh, you know, she was like, Well, I believe if you're good, good will come back to you. Well, what does the Bible say? There are none good. <laughs> yeah, no, not one. You know. So in verse nine, now we get into some kind of a Kind of uncharted territory, if you will. It says yet uh, the archangel. Or does anybody have any questions about anything in verse uh, verse eight? Or anything to add? My uh, commentary says that dig the dignitaries. The last term frequently refers to angels. And it could. Did you? Did you? It, it, yeah, I, I, and it could. Uh, I, I mean, I I didn't see it in in, in my commentary. Uh, but I, to, 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 to be quite frank, I did not dig that deep into that last phrase. I did dig it based on what I, I've been reading in Jude. It very well could be, uh, uh, it, it could be angels, and, and I would. I, uh, MacArthur says, "Blaspheme the glorious ones" is the phrase that he uses in the translation. He said that the glorious ones are the angels, and it's supported by the example that he gives in verse nine. Okay. Okay. Which yeah. To. Yeah. And even in, 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 in being angelic, angelic dignitaries, they're referring to well, Michael's we're going to see here, Gabriel. You know, uh, and, and probably what they were doing is they were they were rejecting. Well, okay, Gabriel didn't say anything about God being born of a virgin. Yeah. You know, they they, they would take they just like they were taking and twisting. Peter and Paul and, and Jude and James, they were they were they were twisting the gospel about what the angels did and what their what their purpose what their purpose was. That must have been a hard thing coming from the standpoint of maybe there wasn't a written word for these people that these teachers were teaching. Yeah. yeah. You know, they didn't have any way to go back and and just research that stuff. Well they had the they had the old test. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah, they did have they did have the Old Testament, but but they also had which up until the, the 1800s or so, 17, 1800s, they had oral tradition also, which oral tradition always held a lot of weight, and, and until the critics of Christianity came on the scene, you know they were the, 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 as they passed the as they passed the books, you know the, the books of the law. And, you know, they a lot of the scholars had those memorized, and they not only had them memorized, they could explain it to them. It just wasn't written down anywhere. You know, that's like if you remember, uh, you guys are all old enough to remember Roots, yeah. the book Roots. You know, from what I understand, I think some of his stuff has been proven to be false, but a lot of what he learned about his heritage was from oral tradition being passed down, you know, generation to generation to generation. And uh, <clears throat> until higher criticism came up in the 17, 1800s uh, in Christianity, oral tradition uh, was was looked upon as okay. You know, it, it's funny how so many things in the secular world, when it comes to history and literature, they will accept tradition but when you try to apply those same principles to the Bible, oh no, uh -uh. can't you, you can't do that in this situation? Because they don't have as much wiggle room. No, they, no, no. And no. it's not easier. And, and well, and, the, and, and see, but the, the 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 most amazing part of it though is 
even when you get to written transcripts. Now, I, I'm, it's been a while since I've studied it, so I'm pulling numbers out of my head. Probably not accurate, but to give you a, an idea. There are maybe five copies of Homer's Iliad and Odyssey out there. There are literally 20,000 copies of the Old Testament. But yet they are a, a Herodotus who wrote ancient, we, we know most of what we know about ancient Western civilization by Herodotus. And Josephus. And Josephus. But a lot of stuff that Herodotus wrote is secondhand knowledge. Yeah, we don't have his actual tradition. Yeah. But they accept it. And again, there might be five or six copies. But again, there are thousands of copies of the Old Testament. And its authenticity was verified when they discovered the Dead Sea Scrolls back in the 1940s. You know, they, there is a, is it Isaiah? A, a complete copy of the book of, of Isaiah that was found in the, in the Qumran caves. Yes. Uh, so uh, we, we're, we're talking about, uh, talking about evil with dignitaries, and we get on verse 9. Uh, yet Michael, the archangel, in contending with the devil, when he disputed about the body of Moses, dared not bring against him a reviling accusation, but said, The Lord rebuke you. Now, according to the apocryphal book of the Assumption of Moses, we talked about the apocrypha for a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, these are. What is that? means beside or in addition to basically yeah 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 uh, and there are there are there are several several of them out there and, and they're not they're not bad for reading just don't take a lot of your uh, theology from it you know because there isn't there one out there about uh, some woman that was supposed to have been in the garden of eden with adam and eve i yeah. can't think of what her name there's is there's one in there about bell and the dragon yeah 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 <laughs> yeah yeah there's all kinds of stuff uh, there's but, extra books of Esther, yeah, well, you're which right. are relatively good. Yeah, yeah. And the Jews accept them. They, yeah, they, yeah. The Jews accept them, but Christianity doesn't. Accept well, not them. all of them. The Jews don't accept all of them. Yeah. Are they some of the books that are not in part of the Bible? Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. They were, yeah. I mean, there are even some books. There are even some books in the Catholic Bible yeah. that we don't have in, in our Bible because they, because we don't see them as being divinely inspired. Right. They yeah. Don't match up. Yeah. And they're yeah. mostly historical books. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like it's like, yeah, like we said, they're good for history, but maybe not, don't get your theology out of them. But a yeah. lot of the other apocryphal books are things that are brought down through Syrian and Islamic oral tradition. You Gnostics. Know, Gnostics, um, yeah. you know, bedtime stories for kids kind of thing, you know. Okay. Yeah. And, Nothing divine, it's not divinely inspired, and when they were eating a bit, they excluded it from the canon of scripture. And, and just to touch on that, too, when, when, when we talk about being divinely inspired, there's a lot of critics today that will try to say, well, the, well, the Bible wasn't codified. In other words, it wasn't given the Omni Domni for four or five hundred years. I think it was the Council of Trent or yeah. something like that. One yeah. of, there were several councils. Yes, there. yeah. And, and, and it wasn't made official until then. That's the Greek word for that is baloney. Because, <laughs> because the early church fathers, Peter, Paul, Jude, James, well, the disciples and that generation after them, they, they knew the books that were accepted. What happened at these councils was like it needed to be, like it needed to happen. They verified what the disciples and the early church fathers believed because again there were folks there have been folks you know it, it wasn't like you know we, we read here in the scriptures and the gnostics and the false teachers were there and they died out and about a thousand years later they crop back up again they have always satan has always been throwing darts at the at the church and, and at the scriptures trying to get people to not believe it and you have to remember in the jewish tradition uh, religion and interpretation of religion was passed down genealogy. In other words, there were the Levites, and you were a priest because you were a Levite. That didn't necessarily mean that you understood what it meant to be a priest. Yeah. You inherited the role. I mean, that, and that, and it depended on who had the most clout as to who 
establish the current tradition. Yeah. That would almost be like me. I've got three boys. My boys are saved, as far as I know. But because I'm a pastor, all three of them automatically become pastors. You know, it's not, it's not like that. You've got to be saved. You've got to be, even if you're saved, you've got to be called. But what the Jews, based on the Levitical law, you know, <laughs> you got no choice in the matter, son. And, and, and look at what happened by the time Eli came on the scene. Yeah. Uh, you know, Eli and then Samuel and Eli's sons. Uh, and even the, when they chose King David and yeah. his descendants, you know. Yeah, yeah. They weren't all good. <laughs> but, but getting back to this, talking about Michael. Now, there's an apocryphal book called The Assumption of Moses, mm -hmm. which we only have parts of. We don't have the the whole thing don't even have this part here. Well, I've got been, a reference to that back to Daniel. And Daniel Stevens yeah. was Michael. Okay, okay. Yeah, so I mean we know that he that he he's an actual angel. Yeah, yeah we know that he's actually fighting. He knows that he's actually fighting, fighting. He fighting. fighting. Yeah. battles. Yeah. This yeah. very reference. But this right. is, happens to be the only place that he mentions fighting for Moses' body. Yeah. Oh, Moses' body is yeah. not. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. yeah. that, that's what we're going to get to. Sure. You know. I, it's, we don't even have that part, but again, based on what the early church fathers wrote about the assumption of Moses, it's it's believed that that there's a, a, a story, a reference to Michael, the archangel, fighting Satan for the body of Moses after Moses died. Right. And they, they claim, uh, the, the book claims, uh, said that Satan tried to claim the body of Moses. Why, we don't know exactly, but perhaps... Uh, scholars believe that Satan wanted to claim the body of Moses to try to make an idol mm -hmm. out of Moses so that the children of Israel, instead of following Joshua, instead of following God, oh, well, here's your, here's your, here's your God here's that your led God. you out of Israel. My commentary says that the devil said that it was because Moses was a murderer. Well, I was going to get to that. That's a, that's a good commentary. Yeah, yeah, he tried to accuse Moses of being a murderer also. That you know, it was Moses' fault. Uh, not only did he kill the Egyptian, but uh, uh, it was his fault that the children of Israel died in the wilderness. You know, it was his fault that that these other countries were slain by the Israelites. So yeah. that's a that's a good commentary. You got and there. it was and it was his fault that like the clan of Korah, who God struck down and did away with because of their sin. Yeah. He Satan would try to say, well, Moses caused. It's coming up. It's, it's coming, coming up. up. It's coming up. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and, but man, all y'all are still in my pocket tonight. But that's a that's a good thing. You know. Yeah. Yeah. They they got, uh, part of the book uh, of the Assumption of Moses said that Satan claimed that that uh, that Moses was a murderer. Uh, and, and again, those parts of the uh, the parts that referenced here in uh, in, in Jude uh, in Jude verse nine, we don't have in writing. We don't have in writing, but they're referred to by some of the early church fathers, including the historian Josephus. We, we learn a lot about, yeah. uh, about uh, uh, is, Israeli history, history, Jewish history, and even a little bit about Christianity from Josephus. Josephus was a, a Jewish historian that was under the thumb of the Romans. He had no love for Christianity, but in his book, he 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 recorded the things that the Christians did. Yes, and he <laughs> and he said that Jesus was the Son of God. He didn't say Jesus claimed to be the Son of God. He said Jesus was the Son of God. Now, whether he ever became a believer, we don't know. But Josephus referenced this passage about the archangel Michael uh, in the in the in, from the book The Assumption of Moses. So we're getting secondhand if you will, in information. Uh, but information that based on other things we've learned from them is reputable. Uh, yeah, there's a kernel of truth yes, in a lot of yeah. and, and, and some of them are uh, like looser than others. But the big thing I want us to focus on here is it says when he disputed about the body of Moses, dared not bring against him, meaning Satan, a reviling accusation, but said, the Lord rebuke you. You know, 
We see TV preachers all the time saying, oh, we, you need to rebuke Satan or you need to rebuke the, the demon of this. I, I, I read, uh, I, I was reading a, a story one time or a book one time where a guy was, was riling on some of these TV preachers. And he said that the, 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 the way for our country to have revival is that, a, is a, is that an, an anointed man of God needs to go to the highest point in our major cities and rebuke the demon that has charge over that city. I, I've never that's, read that's anything. Not, not, yeah, not, exactly. Not our job. I've never read anything close to that in the scriptures. But but well, yet these TV preachers. We're supposed, to, we're supposed to let God rebuke Satan. Exactly, and God and that's what Satan. that's God what Michael was doing. Michael even had the Michael didn't say I rebuke thee in the name of Jesus. He said God God rebuke you. Yeah. You know, I mean I'm small potatoes, but if I ever got in there with with Satan. Uh, I wouldn't be in the name of Jesus Christ. You know, that's you don't see that in the scriptures. You know. But you can ask God to rebuke them for you. Exactly. Exactly. You know, God, what, which is what Michael did. God rebuke you. You know, but we also need to remember that we're to continuously, you just can't rebuke a demon, even in God's name. Ask God to rebuke it, and then and then think, okay, it's, it's all, all it's all gravy here because what does the book of James tell us? And James 4 7 says, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. That word resist is a continuous action. It's not like we say, get behind me, Satan, one time. Oh, okay, well, John's serious. He, he's serious now. And it's I'm not like him alone. demon. Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> you know, if he knows I'm serious. What is he going to do? He's going to keep on hammering. Yeah. You know, he and his demons, they're going to keep on hammering. Well, Satan wasn't the only angel that got thrown out exactly. of there. Are, but 10,000 yeah. more went yeah. with it. So. And, we, and we talked about that, I, I think, the first week, that there are some some demons that are chained, chained now, and that there are some that have got free reign. God's get, they're under God's control, so I shouldn't use the word free reign, but they're, but they're allowed to be wandering around. And know. they can still take control of you if you let them. Yeah. Well, as a Christian, they can influence us. I, us I believe in demonic possession. And they but, can make us be bad witnesses. Yes. Yeah. And I'm, geez, I need to give both of you guys. I've got to have to go out in the hallway. Because I'm going to... Uh, but, oh, I lost my train of thought there. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, no, you're fine now because it was a good both of y'all are making right? everybody's making drinks. Can, uh, they can oh, try they, they, lost, can, they, they can they can influence us. Right. If not. you're not, I believe in demonic possession. If you're not saved, I believe they can possess you. The reason yes. they cannot, I don't remember the scripture, but it states, Greater is he who is, is in, in me than he who is in the world. world. The Holy Spirit yeah. in you. Keeps yeah. that demon from possessing you. You know but that doesn't mean he can't push you aside. They can do stuff. That they can be right. if you accept what they're. Right. I'm almost ashamed to say this, but I, I learned that verse from Oral Roberts when I when I was when I was a kid. Everybody got parents, a little bit of yeah, good. My, 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 oh yeah, my, my parents my parents didn't my parents didn't go to church, and there were a lot of times on Sunday morning when Dad. Was either in bed or out fishing, wasn't watching TV. I cut it on, and I, of course, you only had four stations to yeah, yeah, turn right. from. Yeah. And I remember the opening to Oral Roberts. You know, they were singing, "Greater is He that is in me than He who is in the world." Mm -hmm. You know, uh, but again, you know, uh, we just can't we can't rebuke him on Satan or his demons on our own. We, we need to ask God to do that, but also remember it's not a one-time thing. We've got to continuously submit to God and continuously fight the devil. And again, I said the words not resist doesn't mean one time it's an ongoing threat. Satan won't give up. He and his minions will continuously come after us to try to defeat us. Here's where, where Elaine got, got part of me here, but it was good. There are three things that the devil wants to do in our lives to get us to rebel against God. One is to, to destroy our life. I mean our entire life. If we're saved, he can't do that. We die, what's the worst thing that can happen to us? <laughs> I shut my eyes here, I open my eyes in heaven. Yep. You know. So he wants to destroy our lives. 
He wants to destroy our health. He wants to destroy our testimony. Well, if we're Christians, he can't touch our lives because we're saved. He can mess with our health, and I'll use Job as an example of that. You know, God allowed Satan to go go this far, but no farther. So he can he can he can mess with our health to get us to curse God and die, for lack of a better term, like Job did. And then the third thing, if, he, if none of that works, as Elaine said, he can try to destroy our testimony. There's there's nothing more to me more dangerous or more hurtful for a Christian than to have a destroyed testimony. And, and I think, you know, there are, there are quite a few pastors that over the years I looked up to. And here it seems like in the last three or four years, these men that I thought were really strong in the Lord, and I'm not saying they, 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 they were not, but in a moment of weakness, they fell. And as Jesus talked about the, uh, as Jesus said, great was the fall of it. You know, because it took Tony Evans. I don't agree with everything Tony Evans preached, but but Tony Evans, you know, uh, I don't know if you've ever heard of Johnny Hunt out of out of Atlanta, Georgia. He was a great pastor. Uh, uh, really looked up to him, and it, it it turns out that he committed a sin years ago, and, and uh, it wasn't brought to anybody's attention until after he retired from ministry. You know, so many. So many men, and and uh, you know, Tom but, I'm sorry. Tom the the artist? Yes, I've read some stuff about. Yeah, when he passed. No, he wasn't passed. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. But but still, I mean, you don't have to be a pastor to lose your testimony, you know. Uh, and, and so that's what Satan tries to do with us. That's why we shouldn't be so flippant about. Well, I rebuke you, you know. Because the minute we try to take that power on our own, I believe Satan. This, this is my this is my commentary yeah. here. Okay, uh, I, I think the minute we get that cocky and arrogant, even if we're sincere, Satan and his demons will go. Okay, you, you think so? Yeah. <laughs> Look what's going to happen? Yeah. Next. <laughs> you know, an unguarded strength is a double weakness, mm -hmm. and we need it. We need to remember. Sometimes I always ask the Holy Spirit. To I'm sorry? At those times, I've always asked the Holy Spirit. Oh, yeah. 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 You know, I used, to, I, I used to think, you know, there's nothing, nothing in the world that could make me cheat on my wife. And then I saw over the years some of these pastors follow. My prayers become, Lord, keep you strong. Yeah. Be, because you never, you've heard me say before, in a moment of weakness, any one of us can commit the most heinous sin there is out there. We can say we won't. We can say we never. And it's that Satan's a beguiler in those situations yep. too. And, yep. and, and he'll he'll try to manipulate you to make you think that it's okay with the Holy Spirit. Oh, yeah. You know it's not. Yep. Yep. Yeah. 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 But surely that's not what we meant, Jesus. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Exactly. You know. If, uh, and I, again, I already touched on it. If we're born again, he can't destroy our lives, but he can destroy our testimony. Uh, anybody have anything else to add to that? Well, that's why this said this. He said, you know, talking about verse 9, but that uh, the Christians are to deal with Satan and demons. <coughs> Believers are to not to address them, but rather to seek the Lord's intervening power against mm -hmm. them. Yeah. And, and that's hard to do when you come from, you, you're used to physically fighting things or mentally fighting things. And it's, you want to take that power because you're mad and you're upset and you've been hurt by what these demons are doing and you know they're wrong and you want to strike out against them, yeah. but it's not our job. Yeah, you're right. That's, yeah. Why, that's why that, the, the, the armor of God verses are so good when you get into that mindset. That you have to fight well, okay. Yeah. But put on the Holy Spirit, put on salvation, put on yeah. the word, put on faith, mm -hmm. and you can fight. But what are those things do? Do they don't physically give you a sword? No. They give you a mental sword. Yeah. To talk Spiritual to God. Sword. To talk yeah. to God. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And that yeah. sword is the the word. Yeah. Amen. Amen. He goes on in verses ten and eleven. I don't know if we'll get through this or not. He says, but these speak evil of whatever they do not know, 
whatever they know naturally, like brute beasts and these things, they corrupt themselves. Woe to them, for they have gone in the way of Cain, and have run greedily in the era of Balaam for profit, and perished in the rebellion of Korah. Now he's, he's uh, uh, Jude's given some more examples of, of false teachers here. And in verse 10, he's, he's talking about that they, they speak evil of, of what they do not know. You know, uh, Solomon said there's nothing new under the sun. Just as these false teachers were speaking ignorant or they were speaking evil of what they what they don't know, they spoke evil of, of, of Jesus uh, and the church leaders of their time, the same thing happens today. It's not necessarily teachers that are doing it. You know, there's a lot of people that you talk to oh, yeah. that aren't. Oh yeah, 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 that's a good point. They don't understand. Yeah, it's not just people, but it, it, it's folks that it's unbelievers. You know, you try to share Jesus Christ. Oh, I don't believe that bunk. You know, that that that's that's for we weak, weak what was it, Jesse Ventura years ago? I, I love wrestling, but he was governor of Michigan or Minnesota or something, and uh, he uh, hopefully he's changed, but he used to say that Christianity was for weak minded people. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, you know. Uh, well, they, they speak evil of what they don't, what they don't know, what they don't understand. And some will even say, well, you know, I read the Bible and I didn't get anything out of it. Well, of course you're not going to get anything out of it if you're just reading it, to, to read it like a book. You know, now I have read a couple stories of, of, of folks that have become Christians that read the book trying to disprove Christianity. But God told the Spirit was working on them so that the more they study, hey, this this a lot of those people that say that they don't read the Bible. You're right. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Because yeah. this, if they do read the Bible, it is like a sword that will tear them to yeah, the soul. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I would say, out of all the people that have told me they've read the Bible, I'd say 99.9 percent .9 of them have. They, 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 yeah, they hear see yeah, a yeah. verse or even a book, a book out of the Bible, or like you said, heard something that somebody read, but no, right. no, because right. because if you read it, it's going to bring conviction, yeah. and conviction is going to do one of two things: either you're going to run to God or you're going to run away from Him. You know, right. I know my pastor used to used to talk about the fact he said I, he says I want our church to be. The kind of church that we, we love everybody, we want people to come, we want people to get saved, but we want our church to be the kind of church where the Holy Spirit is working so powerfully that one or two things are going to happen. They get convicted and come to know Jesus, or they can get convicted and they run. And he says, and if they run, we still pray for them. You know. Uh, talks about uh, speaking evil of what they don't know. Uh, you know, that's speaking evil, it's another word for blasphemy. Again, the Gnostics and the false teachers claimed a, a mystical knowledge that gave them the authority to be doing what they were doing. But according to them, this mystical knowledge was only attainable by the few, you know, by, by, by the elite. Not everybody could have it. You see, that's the difference between what they believed in, in, in Christianity. You know, there, I, I dare say there are folks out there that are not pastors that have more knowledge of the Bible and, and can use it more wisdom than me. I was going to include, include Pastor Carolyn in that, but I don't think that's true. <laughs> you know, but, but there are folks that, you know, they, just because you're a preacher, you know, being a preacher, being a pastor, we should keep our nose to the grindstone and stay in the Word and, and, and study the Word. You know, but it's not, it, it's not the, 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 the deep truths of God's word isn't just for pastors. It isn't just for Sunday school teachers. It's for whoever wants to put the time and the study and the effort and wants to be obedient to what they learn that, that God's going to, God's going to share with them. And these guys didn't believe that. Uh, and you know what? I think I'm going to stop right there because I got 6:59, and we'll pick up from there next week. Does anybody, anybody in your commentary have anything to add to that? But we'll we'll, we'll continue with verse 10 yeah. next week.
Yeah, thank, and, and I'm just, my reference is 2 Peter verse, uh, 2 Peter chapter 2, almost identical yep. verses. Yep, verse yep. Verse yep. that's what my commentary is yep. referenced also. Right into the same churches. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And for the same sins. Okay, well, we will hopefully see everybody Sunday morning. Now, don't forget if you can make it, we've got the uh, uh, tomorrow. We'll go to lunch tomorrow. Uh, I think you guys, I, I, bye you guys, I'll talk to you all later. <laughs> I, I got to talk about camp.